And how is it going guys? It's Nozzy here and today I am playing Kerbal Space Program. Yes, we are back with the second season of Ventus Space Agency. This time going for sandbox mode as I'm terrible at career mode and I don't think it's very popular in terms of like with the small channels, i.e. me. Uh, and I'm going to wait until it gets like, gets more, more uh, sort of like more highly developed in a way anyway so back on to the building we are going to be building a small communication satellite just to go and chill in orbit low curb in orbit uh, and uh, for the rest of eternity until something gets destroyed uh, like it gets destroyed or curbing gets destroyed or something like that so anyway doing action groups because action groups are awesome no they're not but they're helpful or uh, solar panels adding them to the action groups batteries to give us a little bit of power if you know what I mean and uh, then we'll build the launch stage a very weird launch stage in fact and I dread to watch this next part of the video as uh, it was a terrible launch it was the worst launch I've ever done however they're also the hardest so we go for just a, a small orbital insertion stage here with the decoupler on the bottom as she seen here with uh, a, a tank and an RV T40 thank you or RV T45 I can't actually see because it's going so fast and I can't remember Two decouplers on the side, two more of the long fuel tanks on on, on the decouplers, with, and they decide not to go on, so we'll just put some more on, because we're cool, and we'll put this on, and then we'll use rapier engines, hey, why not, why the hell not, they were added, let's use them in a rocket, they were built for SSTOs, but yeah, let's use them in a rocket anyway, because we can, yes, anyway, let's skip to the good bit, no, launch, the launch, not to the good bit, even though this is kind of the good bit, because you get to watch and laugh at my failures as we have a terrible terrible takeoff the craft did hover for about four seconds before deciding to get momentum already using most of the fuel in the lvt 45 so yeah it's a pretty b bit bad problem we're gonna thumbnail anyway because why not because thumbnails are cool and uh, yeah so what i am gonna do is however i am going to limit the thrust on the lvt 45 um like to i think 84 so we'll just limit that because because we're cool 84 there we go so that's limited to be a bit more fuel preservative. These are giving out uh, quite a lot of thrust-ish. I think their thrust is 175, so that's 100, uh, 200. It's about 350 and plus 215. That's about 665 kilonewtons of thrust. I probably got that wrong because I'm crap at maths. So uh, anyway, let's carry on. As you can see, we have used up half the fuel in the LVT45 engine. Sorry if you heard my mom coughing there. This is my new mic, and it is picking up everything. I, I don't know how to set it not to do that. But anyway, it is my new blue snowball ice. Anyway, carrying on with the video. Uh, begin, beginning our gravity turn almost too early, I got bored, and it felt like I was going for ages, so I thought I'd just begin my gravity turn. Gravity turn has been begun, and we are about... I can't actually see that on the now fall, because I'm post-commentary, but still. Uh, I'm not happy with the fuel situation, so yeah, let's do the wisest thing ever shortly and uh, let's transfer fuel mid-flight go me such a good idea um anyway we're coming over we're coming covering more of a downrange distance now um the prograde mark vector sorry is actually like going really low and uh, i'm just bringing the nose up here just to try and stop it from doing that try try and bring it back up again because I don't particularly want it like that. Anyway, we'll roll over to help make things a little bit more equal, hopefully. Um, the, the only minor thing is it will change our inclination when we do it. But anyway, so we'll change fuel mid-flight uh, at the right-hand tank first. So here we go, and I'm just terribly sorry if you can hear my computer going... <laughs> my computer doesn't do that, but... You can probably hear it doing that, or something along those lines. Anyway, so we are transferring fuel into the main engine, and you can see it has changed our inclination ever so slightly, but it's not a problem, because we're now going to make it equal by transferring the same amount of fuel out of the uh, left-hand tank into the right-hand tank. And we do end up screwing this up in terms of later on in the flight, it screws us over because it gives us... Um, 
it, it like the the left hand engine well my left well your left too has um well now on the right has more fuel in so it does screw us over a little bit but never mind uh burning northwards just to try and bring that prograde vector up a bit more as i said earlier uh still traveling at really bad velocity for this altitude 10 10 000 meters 11 000 now we're only we're not even f traveling supersonic yet which sucks really if you ask me but never mind we can we can we can try trying to get an inside view of the fairing there wasn't happening uh we're nearly out of fuel again on the lvt45 engine because these uh the rapier engines are so efficient uh, so we're going to transform transfer more fuel and because we're in thinner atmosphere yes it does affect us more now so of course this being a major problem but it's nothing good old nosy can't cope with touch wood my wood is touched giggity and um so just bring it back over to the middle now almost there almost there almost there trying to keep those two equal which it turns out I'm really bad at anyway. So uh, anyway, we'll carry on. I say anyway too much. Anyway, 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 anyway. You could tell our inclinations off because we're not aligned with the moon, and the moon is in a perfect, perfect equatorial orbit around Kerbin. However, not so in real life. I don't think anyway. It might be actually. I'm not sure. I if it is, I look like a fool. So anyway, the intakes are. Um, out because we're so high now so the uh, rapier engines are on liquid fuel i probably should have realized that they one had more fuel than the other at this point but no i decided to just pay attention to my altitude and speed which we are now at a decent speed we're just about to come over to a thousand meters per second which is uh, one kilometer a second and an orbital velocity i believe is around two kilometers a second which is pretty darn fast i know that the voyager voyager space probe travels at is 11 miles a second now that's pretty ridiculous and you think oh that's space it's not that far it's not that far God. but if you put it into perspective that is mental that is from here to my nans 11 times in a second damn that is pretty darn fast jesus and i thought usain bolt ran fast but god and it took it how many years to do that uh it's been it reached interstellar space 30 oh look, look there we go that's the fail it really did put us uh, it did really did hinder the flight but never mind we're now facing north which is not good for our velocity vector but um for some reason the engine decided to malfunction at this point and we didn't have a sufficient for us to overcome the atmosphere but never mind oh wait we're out in the atmosphere now i sound stupid don't i uh we'll detach that anyway and we'll fire off the lv 909 uh, the apple apps is coming too close to us so we do bring it up again just to push it away from us and burn I just decided to put it to just to be a bit above the prograde vector just to try and keep it level but yeah as I was saying the Voyager 1 it took it it took it uh, sorry if you heard that guys it took it 36 years correct me if I'm wrong but I think it took it 36 years to get to interstellar, interstellar space if you don't know what interstellar space is, it's the space between galaxies, I think, or stars. Um, it's like it's gone further than the furthest planet, Pluto. Is Pluto the furthest planet? I think it is. Or is it Neptune? No. Wait. No, it's definitely Pluto, because it's the ice planet, because it's so far away from us, the sun. I'll tell you what, if you ever want to trick someone, you want to ask them this question. What is the closest star to Earth? Now, if they're really clever, they'll say the sun. If they think of stars as like little balls of light in the sky, which they kind of are, then they won't say the sun, because the sun is actually a star. Yes, it's a star, it's, which mind boggles me, really, because if you think about it, there are, I'm just going to talk over the next part, because the next part is quite boring in terms of what we do. We just build a little space plane. I, well it's not even a space plane we just test some aerodynamic things uh fairing goes detach the thing deploy everything at prograde yeah what was i talking about yeah which is pretty mental because how many stars are there in the sky i think in a lecture with brian cox he said something about 300 million 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 stars or something like that it was it was around that number and if you think every one of those stars is well quite a lot of those stars are like our sun 
and our sun has, I think it's nine planets, or eight, one or the other. And so that could mean there is definite, the, the probabilities of there being life is pretty darn high, if you think about it. And it's just mind-blowing to think about that. It's, do you know what also gets me, like, wakes me up when I'm trying to sleep and I start thinking about stuff? Oh yeah, look at that, it was the size of the thing, ha ha ha. Um, yeah, like, if you think, what is beyond space? If it's not infinite, what is there? And if, if the Big Bang never happened, what would there be? There would just be nothing. It's just mind-blowing to think that. I, I just, oh god, it just kind of scares me. This has been quite a deep commentary, hasn't it? Yeah, sorry if I've disturbed anyone. But never mind, we'll carry on testing our plane, which will be captained by none other than Jebediah himself. God help us all. And it is the short-range reconnaissance aircraft, which will just go check things on the launch pad before any launches, if it can fly. Spoiler! Um, so yeah. That is pretty ridiculous to think about that. Anyway, with eight minutes of commentary left, I think, or four. Uh, there's about four minutes of commentary left, I guess. Um, yes, yeah, so it's pretty ridiculous. But as I was saying about the, the the alien world sort of thing, that is, there is probably alien life, or if there's not, a species very similar to us. Because don't forget, aliens can be like little bacteria living on the planet. Which is, this, this, this is pretty cool. That's one of the reasons, I think, it was Apollo 11, 12, 14 and 15, I'm not sure. They, when they came back, they didn't like go running to their families or something. They were put in like these decamination, decontamination chambers for about three weeks. Just in case there was any like alien sort of life on the earth. Because in, in War of the Worlds, a reference to War of the Worlds, it says that um, the the aliens in War of the Worlds... Sorry, if, if, you, if you haven't seen War of the Worlds or listened to it or whatever, and you're planning on doing it, so please just mute your speakers for the next couple of seconds. Um, yeah, they, the, the aliens die by bacteria, so... That's quite that's quite science... That's, that's science fact, because that could happen. My theory is that because... Um, because like the gravity difference, like if you were born on Mars and then you came to Earth, your you, your spine would be crushed because of the pressure difference. Because the gravity on Mars is only one third of that on Earth. Uh, that my theory is like, unless they have, uh, if they're invertebrates, it won't affect them. But if they're vertebrates, then um, if this if an alien species did visit Earth and they were vertebrates, unless they were just mechanical m the machines or something. Uh, we would probably have a good chance of surviving due to our change of gravity, unless their gravity is, like, the same as ours. But if their gravity was more, their spine would expand. Yeah, no, if their gravity was... Yeah, if their gravity was more on their planet, on their home planet, then, then their spine would expand and, like, contract and stuff. Uh, but if it was less, they would, like, be crushed. So yeah, we, we've got our own defence, really. So this has been quite a deep commentary. Um, so I'm going to begin the outro here. We're just going to hire some covers now. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed my very deep commentary, I don't know how I got onto that, but yeah. Um, don't forget to leave a like, or leave a like anyway if you enjoyed the background footage. Next episode, we go to the moon, and we put a rover down on the moon, which was pretty interesting, actually, because I'd never done it before, so it was the first time for me as well, and I made a really funny error. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Um, if you've got anything to say, improvements or anything, I don't mind criticism as long as it's constructive. Drop it in the comments, and uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Stay tuned for more, and goodbye.